So I saw Amsterdam a few nights ago. It's made by David O. Russell, starring a whole huge slew of people. I don't think I'm gonna be able to name all of them, but I'm gonna try. Christian Bale, Margot Robbie, John David Washington, Rami Malek, Anya Taylor-Joy, Robert De Niro, Chris Rock, and Taylor Swift in a very small part. God, this cast is absolutely huge. It's not that common that we see a large ensemble cast like this. So what's Amsterdam about? It's really this period piece, satire, murder, mystery, comedy, that somehow Christian Bale's character, along with John David Washington's character, get tangled up in being accused of a certain thing that happens, and they have to prove otherwise. And it leads to certain things that are revealed by the end of the movie, where it's tied to a certain political regime that's brewing up over in Europe. This is the 1930s, so you could probably guess what I'm talking about. I'll try to be light on the details as possible if anyone's curious. Basically what happens, and I have to put the mild spoiler warning in here, they discover that someone's trying to infiltrate the United States government and cause a dictator like Hitler or Mussolini to rise up in the United States due to them being dissatisfied with FDR's presidency. Using Robert De Niro's character, who is based on a real life person at the time, there's even a text before the movie starts saying some of this actually happened or a lot of this actually happened. American Hustle had a very similar type of thing happen. In fact, this movie definitely reminds me of American Hustle and, you know, for what it's worth, I actually really like that movie. A lot of people said that it was overrated or overhyped because of all the Oscar nominations it received. I don't get any of that stuff. Some of the mystery plot was a little too hard to grasp at times. The biggest strength that that movie has, along with this one, is that David O. Russell allows his actors to play around in his sandbox while also having it a very structured type of environment. Now, if you heard a noise, that's just some truck backing up outside my house. <laughs> so apologies if that was distracting. Christian Bale is the lead star here. This is probably one of his funnier performances. And in fact, he's really, I think, a great comedic actor. If, if any of his movies are any indication from the past, American Hustle or his little moments that he has in The Fighter, like when he goes, what kind of dog is that? Is that a Cocker Spaniel? In this one, it's no different. He has this really bizarre wide-eyed look on his face sometimes. Just for myself, I was leaning in going, like, what's he gonna say? Because you're just waiting for some funny line to come out of his mouth. And at one point he actually pops his head out from behind a wall. There wasn't that many people in the theater I saw this in, but they just lost it when he did that. And I did too. I also really like John David Washington and Margot Robbie's dynamic. Even though I've heard some people say that they didn't really have a whole lot of chemistry, I didn't really feel anything else otherwise. I thought they did fine. Nothing really groundbreaking or anything. Chris Rock doesn't really have as much to do as I thought he was going to, but he does have some really funny moments, as a lot of the other actors do. Rami Malek was really kind of a surprise for me as to how they used his character and how he was connected to the certain devious elements of what's going on behind the scenes. Along with his wife, played by Anya Taylor-Joy, who has a really strong obsession and worshipping type of behavior towards Robert De Niro's character, almost to the point where she's idolizing him. In fact, there was a moment in the movie where she finally meets him and it was not exactly comfortable to watch. It was actually kind of awkward. Not entirely in a bad way, but not in a good way necessarily either. And the look of this movie is very pristine. It's Even though it's really clean and freshly laundered in some areas, there's a lot of other spots where it actually looks really lived in and dirty and grimy. Just how, like I would imagine it was in the 1930s during the Great Depression. And this is set in New York City, which even by today's standards, it's not exactly the most clean place to be in. Oh my god, I just remember two other actors. Michael Shannon and Mike Myers are in this one. They have certain key ties to certain government officials like MI6 or the CIA or the OSS as it was called back then. No, it was the Department of Treasury. My fault. I don't even know. <laughs> and De Niro is basically just De Niro at this point. He's always likable in anything he's in. It's like seeing Michael Caine in a Chris Nolan movie. It's pretty obvious seeing how these two have become really close pals in collaboration with each other, just like Christian Bale and David O. Russell. On the note of David O. Russell, apparently I've heard that he's not exactly the most likable person in real life. There's some controversy that's come up about him. I'm not exactly sure what it is. I never really looked into it. Even so, I don't blame people necessarily for not liking him as a person, but I think he's made a lot of really good movies and you gotta give credit where it's due. But would I put this movie on the same level as The Fighter or Silver Linings Playbook or American Hustle? Probably not. In fact, a lot of this movie I haven't really even remembered by the time it was over, which isn't a bad thing necessarily, but it's also not exactly a good thing. If you're looking for something really enticing with a lot of gravitas, you're not gonna get that here. Probably better off watching it on streaming because it's not the most memorable either. And the mystery elements, for myself at least, were kind of obvious after a while where I thought, okay, 
I think I know where this is going. But what really elevates this movie for me is the three lead performances by Christian Bale, Margot Robbie, and John David Washington. The three of them bouncing off of each other makes the film a lot more worthwhile than what the movie allows them to. And the more I watch John David Washington, the more excited I get to see what else he does going forward. Like when he raises his voice sometimes, or when he's just simply having a conversation. Other people have said this, but he sounds exactly like his father. I have expected him to say something like, move those hands and I'll slap the taste out of your mouth. You understand me? And when it comes to Taylor Swift, there's really not much to talk about with her. She has like a small part for about maybe five minutes total of screen time. When I saw her in the trailer, I thought, oh my god. <laughs> this is probably either going to make or break the movie for some people because you either love Taylor Swift or you just despise her completely. I'm not a fan of hers necessarily. I think some of her music is okay at best. I got nothing against her personally, but I understand why people don't like her. But if you're worried about her having a large part in this movie, she's only in there for probably the first 10 minutes. And that's it. To any haters out there, you're probably gonna like what happens to her. <laughs> so take from that what you will. So in the end, I thought Amsterdam was a fine movie. Nothing truly horrific, but not exactly the most memorable either. In fact, you're probably not gonna remember this probably 48 hours after you see it. It's probably something, as I said, you'll more than likely watch on streaming for the first time. You could have it as like a background type of movie if you're doing something with your friends or your family. And you might look at it once in a while on TV and see what's going on. From David O. Russell, it's not really something that I would like to see him do. But I do appreciate the attempt that he made. Will this be his last movie that he ever does for a while, as I've heard some people say it might be? Who knows? Any movie that he does, I'd be willing to see. Because history has shown that he's been able to really impress audiences. And Silver Linings Playbook, I've talked about it before on my channel. I adore that movie. I adore that movie so, so much. So those are my thoughts on Amsterdam. If you guys seen the movie, comment below and tell me what your thoughts are. And just a quick announcement, I have a couple of reviews in mind for you guys since this is October. I was trying to figure out what movies I could talk about for Halloween or something horror themed or scary movie themed. I had a hard time figuring that one out because I'm not really into the horror genre. So don't expect something from me about Friday the 13th or Saw or anything like that. You're not gonna get that from me. I'm, that's not really what I do. But I did have two examples in mind. One of them is not so overtly horror, I suppose but it does have some scary themes to it. They are E.T. and Signs. Would you be interested in seeing those reviews? Either way, let me know in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. If you've seen Amsterdam, comment below and tell me what your thoughts are, and I'll see you guys in the next one.